welcome to the Wealth House Show. Such a pleasure to have you on another edition of the Well Child Show, brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. My name, as always, is Kemak Onyenuchea, and I'm your host. I'm so glad to introduce my co-host today, Claire Henshaw. Hi, everyone. It's yeah. nice to be on the show today. Apologies all, I lost my right. voice. Right, Claire has uh, an I issue lost, with her voice. I lost my voice, so I'll try to scream and shout. It's so glad to so have you on the show today. Me. Thank nice you so much. Here. You're welcome. Thank you viewers for staying with us. On the show today, we're looking at a very critical topic. And of course, as you know, the health, safety and protection of children is the crux of the matter here on the Well Child Show. So today, Claire and I are going to be sharing some um, practical tips that would help you parents, guardians, teachers, and childcare professionals to ensure the safety of children in your care. Let's take a very quick breather. When we return, the Well Child Show continues. Don't go away. Thank you for staying with us. It's the Well Child Show brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. If you're just tuning in, you're welcome to the program. My name is Kema Unyanuchea and I'm your host and I have my co-host today, Claire Henshaw, International Development Consultant, Advocate for the Rights of Girls and Women and a social worker. Claire, it's so great to have you on the program today. Yes, thank you, Kemak. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so, so surprised that the first time that I'm going to co-host with you, right. I suddenly lost my voice. It's <laughs> all good. <laughs> all right, so today we're looking at effective strategies for child protection. And of course, um, to my viewers, Claire has just uh, published a free workbook. It's called Protect Her. Mm -hmm. But for the you know for the case or for the rather for the benefit of today's broadcast we're looking at how the resource in this material is going to benefit both the boy child and the girl child Absolutely. and of course i might add it's a free resource that is available to all parents schools teachers and childcare professionals and it will help you to you know imbibe safety tips and strategies that are really practical very easy and quick to adopt all right claire we're looking at i think at the first page we have about four pillars or the four corners of self-defense and safety right and one of the pillars that we have is courage the second one you talked about self-defense resilience and awareness and understanding can you take us through a breakdown of these four pillars of protection for children. Okay, Kamak. Um, the idea behind this workbook came about um, when we decided. My friend, uh, my my co co um, founder right. of the um, campaign called Protect Her. Great. We realized that to a very large extent, many times and many oftentimes, young girls that often get raped mm -hmm. usually are girls that are vulnerable, or even young boys that are often mm -hmm. vulnerable or too trusting because mm -hmm. they do not know the idea behind what rape is. Right. And um, I think the best thing that any parent can give a child is self-confidence. Right. Courage. Right. And these things are oftentimes seen and learned from parents. Mm -hmm. But again, you can teach your children some of these things. Right. So self-confidence is an important aspect of child safety right a confident child will definitely know how to speak up in mm. the event of an abuse or in, in a situation whereby there's a problem that they can probably cannot handle by themselves mm. but the confidence that they have within them to speak up against such calamity or such abuse mm. is enough for them to be able to at that point in time escape whatever issues or challenges they may face right self-confidence gives a child the opportunity to you know be aware mm. of their power mm -hmm. of their voice their free moral, and agency. Their free moral agency as a matter of fact you find out that a potential abuser mm. will stay clear of a self-confident young that's child. right that is to very to that extent nine out of ten cases you find most um, um convicted rapists mm. And when they when they start to you know, open up and confess, they'll tell you that they are actually been grooming this child mm -hmm. because this child was an easy target for them. All right, now Claire, let's talk a bit about grooming. Yeah. What exactly is the process of grooming? Grooming is actually the process whereby a potential abuser or rather an abuser 
piques interest in his or her potential victim. Right. So grooming is a process that happens in stages. Mm. A potential, um, a rapist. I don't even want to use the word potential because a rapist is a rapist. A rapist, a rapist has several things that they look out for in young children. Mm. They look out for children that are often neglected. Mm -hmm. They look out for children that are often, you know, that often lack self-confidence. And they look out for children that probably are passing through one situation at home, em emotional challenges, family situations that make them feel depressed, vulnerable, and want to be on their own. Mm. So the grooming process takes place when an abuser or a rapist is looking at a child from the point of view that this is my next target, this child fits my profile, mm -hmm. and I can actually get this child easily. And then they mm -hmm. start to groom the child. And by grooming, they start to you know say things to the child that makes the child trust them. Like establish a and relationship? Establish a trusting relationship. Mm -hmm. Establishing a situation whereby this particular child begins to like them, begins to appreciate their presence, mm -hmm. and begins to need them. Mm -hmm. Need, of course, varies. It could be the need for validation. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, even up till now, you find that our parents in our own generation find it hard to say, I love you. Right. And so you find a child that constantly hears, I love you. From someone, from someone else. someone else. And then they begin to tilt towards that person. And they begin to open up and share things. Mm. And before you know what's happening, the potential of the abuser or the rapist begins to have total control of, of the that child. child. Mm. And that child becomes very, very comfortable. And that's why sometimes you have this tendency where there is a connection between a rapist and the victim. Right. Because they tend to, you know, want to cover up. You're right, because 98% of the time, um, abusers are known to their victims. Yeah, and there's this sense of um, loyalty that, that victims of abuse have to their abusers. True. It's rooted in the psychological theory of the Stockholm Syndrome, Syndrome yes. where in a sense you become dependent on your abuser. You personally do not enjoy what is happening, but and in some time, way... You just feel loyal to that person. Right. Like you really cannot report that person mm -hmm. because you feel like you're breaking some, some sort trust. of trust. Right. And this is where self-confidence actually plays a major role. Self-confident children will speak up. Mm. Self-confident children will face a potential abuser, a potential situation. And even self-confident children will actually address and, you know... And put a stop. Put a stop. A simple, confident word, not just a single word, no. Leave me alone. Right. Stop. Right. Don't touch me. Right. Words like that actually puts an abuser at bay. At bay. And you know, you're actually very correct because I remember the world supermodel Naomi Campbell. Okay. She mentioned, I listened to one of her interviews and she said she was prime victim for sexual abuse. And that at the point it was going to happen because she was a very vocal confident child who was able to express what she wanted and what she didn't want she was able to say no and that the use of her voice stopped the relative that was going to sexually you know molest her and let's t bring it back to the home how would you say claire as a professional that works with children young girls particularly in what ways can parents help their children to imbibe confidence as a survival skill? I think I'll take it from, let me use myself as a practical example. I have two daughters. Right. And I, as much as possible, engage them. Mm. We talk, and they are free. My, my daughter is seven, and the other one is um, five. That's Naomi and, and Nicole. Naomi and Nicole. And as a matter of fact, we spend time talking about issues that affect them at mm. school. Right. So a self-confident child, for example, would be easily interested in what you have to say because as a as a parent as a mother as a father you actually have your the interest of that child and you want to listen to them mm -hmm. sometimes i know we all get busy as parents but there are some important things that your children say to you and they want you to listen mm. i've actually had situations where I've been, i have been so busy and my daughter would go back to my husband and say mom and that mom is not talking to me i want to talk to her but she seems to be too wow. busy at that moment there's a brain reset. Right. And everything everything you're do, doing and pay and attention. Pay attention to them. They need to know that you will listen to them. And they are priority. And they are priority. They're not, nothing is as important as your children. So as parents, children need to see. As, as, another practical example is that as I'm speaking right now on TV, my children are watching me. Right. And so I'm already planting a mindset of self-confidence in them. Mm. I'm already telling them that, look, mommy's on TV. It means that if mommy can be on TV, you, you can, can be, be on TV. TV. It's in the little things. It's in the basic things that we take for granted. You find that nine out of ten parents that we have um, um, talked to, that we have tried to you know, mentor around issues of rape, 
there are the regular market women that are so busy in the market they leave home at 5 a.m right. they get home at 10 p.m they do not know what is happening in the lives of their children and then somewhere along the line the daughter falls pregnant exactly and then when you start to talk to them you said i never knew mm. and it was just the very next door neighbor that impregnated in fact this afternoon at the, at the office this was a situation we we're trying to resolve oh my word where a, a, a 20 year old girl although she's not a child got pregnant and you know these are issues that parents neglect all the time so as parents practical ways that you can show your children practical, practical examples of self-confidence is to speak with them right show them that you care show them that you have your time let them know that they are priority and what they say matters right and so it could be as simple my friend pushed me in school um i was bullied by by john i was bullied by mary and then you tell them the next time mary bullies you you stand up to her right and after you stand up to mary you report to your teacher mm -hmm. and these are the positive reaffirmations that you need to talk, to, talk right. to your children about because it starts to build up right oftentimes children will learn from what they see really because children learn from observation and exactly. repetition and so my husband and i for example have made it a rule that we would never quarrel in front of our children if we have mm. to have an issue that we need to discuss we do that in the bedroom in the privacy of our bedroom right and my my husband would kiss me in front of the children and say i love mommy mm. i love your mother i love her so much right and i and you know i love you too let children know that they are loved mm. let them know that no matter how busy you grow up in an atmosphere where there is harmony i keep telling people that my father was the best example of what how a man should treat a woman mm. my father would take us out as a family and we would talk and the same with my mom unfortunately these things don't even didn't even happen so much for us in our own time right because everything was all about hush 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 and that, you know I that's another discipline. thing i was going to say claire like parents need to learn to give their children the gravitas to ask questions, questions. and in to some extent to question some of the instructions that they're giving in the home True. because what we realize of course is children are at a stage they're trying to understand, understand. the world around them okay. they're trying to make sense of cause and effect they're trying to just get a grip on why things are the way they are in the universe but as parents sometimes we feel when our children ask us questions that is it's, it's undermining exactly. our authority that is you know trying to make us equal to them i think that rather than see it as a war between parent and child Parents in our generation must be able to get to a point where they're able to arrive at compromises with their children. True. I think that that's a huge, you know, pointer to helping your children imbue confidence. Absolutely, Kim. Mm. I totally agree. And again, I think um, in the home, you know, during our, uh, our time as um, teenagers and as young children, there are, there are things we would see on TV mm. and our parents would tell you, oh, close your eyes. So you probably are watching TV and then a sexual scene comes up mm. and that should actually be a teaching moment for your children. Right. Ideally, sometimes you don't even know what you're watching. Mm -hmm. At one minute, you know, at one point in time, you think it's a program that is for, for, for TV. For kids and, and then family, something And then a sexual up. scene pops up. At that point in time, rather than ask your child, oh, don't watch that, close your eyes. And to, to create some sort of secrecy, secrecy around, around that, because that physical is intimacy. the challenge comes in. Mm. You tell them to keep quiet and then the next time they see they, they are curious right but if you take that as a teachable moment and you tell your child that what is happening now is not for children right you should not kiss boys right you should not do this mm -hmm. and if you have a boyfriend you need to let mommy know you need to right. let daddy know right. you make these things seem like they're rocket science right they are not but actually opening up about these things to our children will make like you said teachable moments yeah. will make will build such um familiarity around these subjects Absolutely. such that when children are faced with compromising situations they know how to handle they it, know how to handle it and, and they can come to you Absolutely, and they can come to you hmm. and you see when we were growing up our parents would tell you that when a boy touches you you fall pregnant right and then you just start to avoid does that still happen now but you see that is how social constructs are sustained mm. if you ask children born within the 80s between the 80s uh, the, the early 80s to the late 80s we all have the same narrative right i can bet that if you ask 10 out of um, ask 10 um, young women what how their parents taught them about sexual education they would say oh my mother said if you touch boys um you fall pregnant right. or don't go out the boys don't do this so the narrative is the same and that's why we need to start to break the social constructs mm. for us to be able to change that narrative 
there must be awareness and there must be proper understanding of what abuse is on the and conversations and around the subject happen. right and so it will interest you that it was for this reason that the protector handbook was actually uh, designed right so let us talk about this things. let us go to schools mm. let us give this to young girls right let us ask them questions and um as much as possible, be honest enough to answer the questions mm -hmm. as best as you as, can. And as truthfully, and as truthfully as, as they should can. be yes. answered. And then let the secrecy around abuse, especially sexual abuse, because abuse are in different forms. We have right. emotional, we have physical, physical verbal, we have verbal neglect. All of that. Mm -hmm. But the one that has been extremely difficult to, to manage in our right. mind is sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. So and it, that has the most far-reaching consequences in the life does. of a child. It does. We're running out of time, Claire. Now, let's move to well, I think we've mentioned a bit about awareness and yes. understanding, conversations. Yes. Now let's look at resilience. resilience. How exactly do we as parents build... First of all, what is resilience? Resilience is the ability to, you know, maintain the, in the initial that you have without necessarily giving up so easily. Mm. You are faced with situations that you can't handle and then you just want to give up and say, oh, I give up, I'm not doing anything right. again, and I'm just going to move on. Mm. We want young girls because we are, girls over time have been told... And I, I mentioned girls because this is this book was actually d designed for girls. For girls, we speak generically. But m mostly, the truth is, f the female child is at greater risk. Yes, at, of sexual abuse. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so often, oftentimes, parents will tell you, you, you want to do something, and then because the narrative and the construct is that girls can do this, girls mm. can do that, mm -hmm. and you begin to question yourself and tell yourself that. I actually can't do this after all girls don't even do this right so in this example when we started training young girls around self-defense skills many of them say oh i can't do that my hands are too uh, my hands are not strong it's enough. not for girls it's not for girls it's for boys it's for the police but we said you are equally as strong as a boy mm -hmm. you need to have that resilience right you need to discipline yourself enough to tell yourself that no matter the challenges in front of you you can surmount them mm. so this is something that is basically lacking especially in environments where Young children are from disadvantaged communities. They've already seen themselves as a failure. Right. But we start to talk to them because when a young girl sees herself as a failure, chances are that she will every step she will take will be towards will be, failure. Exactly. When she's in school and she fails and her grades are bad, she will decide I don't want to go to school. And then right. the next thing will be to find boys that will mm -hmm. take care of her. Mm -hmm. But when girls understand how to be resilient, when they know that people like you have failed before right. and they got up and picked themselves up and they're, and they're doing well, they begin to change the perception around themselves, around exactly. their environment, and then they begin to fight back. Right. So we teach girls resilience. When some of them want to give up, when we're training them on the self-defense skills, we tell them, go and rest and come back in five minutes and mm. continue. And this is how girls build that resilience, build that, resilience that they need. Themselves. And then they apply this to every aspect of their lives. Mm. So in school, their grades get better. In, um, at home, you know, they, they can talk and face people. Like, for girls that don't even like to have um, presentations, when we give them the tests, and then we ask them to present to the class what they have scored and explain what they understand by the book. You, uh -huh. you find that girls that are extremely very shy get up to start talking. Right. And then it just breaks that circle of shame, breaks that circle exactly, of Exactly, because at the end of the day, it's just a mindset, it's a mindset problem. Thing. It's a mindset thing. And then many of them are influenced by the environment from that they come that from. They grow up and in. then the home that they also... So you, you have a, a home where your mother is uneducated, your father is uneducated. So you ask yourself, is this is my life, right? So what right, because I, I mean, because we're human beings, we're creatures of... Um, of um, what's the word now? We're creatures of repetition mm -hmm. right so when you come from a home where there's not you know prior education especially at an advanced level chances are you will tell the same Absolutely. life now it's great that your organization that's the girl inspired through the i safe hub and protect her project is helping to equip teenage girls with skills in martial arts for self-defense can you tell us a bit about this in five minutes what led to this where you are right now i'm a part of the program so i'm i'm so proud of what you're doing and so you know so appreciative of what the girls inspire foundation stands for but let's let's teach let's you know enlighten our view our viewers perhaps someone somewhere can pick up the ball and get inspired by this project Absolutely. and introduce in their own community because so, this is what we want so this is the idea behind protect her <clears throat> I woke up one day and I was enraged and I said to myself, beyond the talk, the round table talk, what are the practical skills we can give young girls so that they can fight back and they can speak up. Mm. So apart from the fact that we do a whole lot of training around self-confidence, around um, 
um, personal hygiene and all the things along their rights, particularly. So right. they need to know. We now actually equip girls on how to defend themselves. Right. The prayer is that no girl will have to fight for her own safety. Mm -hmm. But we know these things happen mm. and we cannot wish them and away. It's better safe than so sorry. It's better safe than sorry because I am all for prevention. Right. So what we do is this we go to communities, we speak to schools, we speak to especially the disadvantaged communities. Those are our core areas. And then we talk to the community leaders there and say, look, we want to train some of the girls in your community on self defense skills. There's a process around it. But because we cannot be everywhere, mm -hmm. we are now turning this into a volunteer based um, platform whereby mm -hmm. women and even men aged between 18 and above can sign up to become our um, volunteers. So when they come on board, we train them over a period of four days mm -hmm. and equip them and give them all the skills they need to go back into their communities to start to train wow. them. By doing that, we are reaching more people in a very short time. Mm -hmm. um, the first training we had um, in December 2019 in the course of training the first set of 30 girls, we found out that there was a girl, a 14-year-old girl, that was already pregnant and she was a part of the training. Unfortunately, we didn't know at that time. Wow. But you know what? When we started talking to her, she said it was consensual. And unfortunately... A minor? A minor. But she did not know... She that didn't she have was, information. She didn't have she information. She couldn't consent. And she couldn't consent. And you saw at the end of the day, she feels devastated. But nevertheless, we've been able to reach as many as 100 girls Great. just within a short period of time because we don't just do one-off training. Mm -hmm. We actually stay with you right. for a period of four follow days. Through. And follow through. It's very thorough. And then we get those volunteers to train mm. and then they get back to us with feedback on how the training has gone. And then we start to start and gather data on the issues around those communities and then right. we see how we can send an intervention. Right, great. Now, you have this uh, very interesting formula and I want us to, before we wrap up, we're going to talk about safety as a basic right for every human being. Okay. But you have a formula here that says physical plus verbal equals good boundary. Yes. So a lot of girls don't understand what boundary means. Some people feel very comfortable around guys young girls feel comfortable sitting in the midst of men older than them mm. and they don't know that there are some boundaries that they should not cross right so what we try to teach young girls is that there are boundaries that must be respected mm -hmm. as a young girl at a certain age there are some places and there are some things you shouldn't do so we try to create an environment whereby they understand their safety zones which could be physical which could be verbal and then at the end of the day they understand how boundary boundary works for your well-being. Right. We teach girls what physical boundary means, respecting themselves and ensuring that they are not suggestive. Right. They are not exposing themselves to attack and to abuse. And we also talk to them about verbal boundaries, whereby they need to know what people, the cue, the, the, the mindset behind what somebody is saying. Somebody could tell you, my wife, my wife, I like you, you are beautiful, can I touch you here? Right, because the idea of having a wife is the right to physical intimacy. Absolutely. So when, when that idea is sold to the girl, she begins to break down the mental barriers that she would naturally have. Uh, exactly. And then when someone who is supposedly my husband wants to gain access, access to parts of the body that he shouldn't, those boundaries are already uh, down. Absolutely. So what we try to tell girls is this. When a conversation begins to go in this direction, mm. this person has actually crossed the boundary from decent conversation to highly responsible conversation. And you should know what those things are. Wow. You should know what those signs are. And then you should nip it in the board right. immediately. Now, great, Claire. This resource is actually free, right? So yes. now for our viewers that want to have a copy of the Protect Her Workbook for Girls, how can they reach out to you? Your Instagram, social media, all phone numbers. Can yeah, we are... Um, I save our website is www.isave.org, isavehub.org, and then you can reach us on Facebook. We have our Facebook platform, which is called Protect Her From Rape. We have our Instagram. Those are the fastest ways you can reach us. But to call us on phone, you call the numbers 070 3375 7721. And we're also calling on sponsors because right. all of this is self-funded. Right, right. And to a very large extent, we want it to go as far and as, wide as, as possible. As we can, yes. So we're looking for people that can also that will partner, partner with us, us to, get, to this, get more of this. To as many people as, as possible. possible yes. Thank you so much for the time today. Of course, we have to continue this discussion Absolutely. tomorrow. Thank you so much to the viewers for being a part of the show today. And of course, I want to take this opportunity to call on well-meaning individuals and organizations to partner with the Well Child Show. We're doing such a great work. Every week I get mails from all over the world about how the information that we bring you on this program is impacting the lives of children and families. 
please come on board and partner with us and help us do more. The numbers showing on your screen are resources that you could use to reach the producers of the show on 0808-330501. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. And of course, I will be back or Claire and I, my co-host, will be back on the program same time next week, Thursday. Please stay with us. And always remember, like we say, child health and safety is everyone's business. business. <laughs> Goodbye and God bless you. Bye.